Webflow just had their biggest day of announcements at Webflow Cons 2023. They announced a new brand, a new UI for their tool and a bunch of new features. And in this video, I wanna cover everything that went down give you my spin and opinion on them and wrap up in kind of like how I see the future of Webflow and the whole web design tool industry. So let's get started. Let's start talking about the brand. The first thing they unveiled is a new brand. And for the first time, I think ever in the design kind of like online community, everybody loves the new logo and the new brand. And I want to give you my perspective on it. Whenever I see a new brand, whether I like it or not, I always ask the question, like, why did you do this? Why did you have to change? You had like a great logo, a great brand. You, you built a lot of equity. Why would you make the change? I've asked the Webflow team this and I got kind of like vague answers, like it wasn't representing us anymore. Um, I don't know. I, I always like to think that there is one of two reasons for doing a rebrand in a big company. Number one is something is literally not working from a practical reason. The assets that they have are making it hard for them to work with. The second thing is there's a new manager, new VP marketing, new something, whatever, and they want to have a new project and they want to put their stamp on it. So they're like, let's do a rebrand. That's super common. Let's do a new website. It's very, very common. I don't know which one is it, but I want to, when I'm kind of like analyzing the logo that they had before and the logo that they have right now, First of all, the new logo, they basically explained the three shapes because the, the web is built from HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which is a nice story. I have to say, if I was designing this logo, which is great, and I was selling it to the client, that's a great story to kind of like explain why. Why did you pick these shapes and why it's three separate elements? So it's a great story. Now, whether the new logo is better, I think that what makes it better than the old logo, which was also okay, is that it's much more unique. I think that if you look at the previous W that they had, especially if you're looking at it at a small scale, it looks like a W and there's actually a bunch of other logos that are just Ws, right? If you look at the Woolworth logo, it's just also a W in a, uh, in a square. You might even look at the, the logo of Wix, which is another web design tool. They have also a W, right? WordPress is also a W. And the Wix W actually is not very different from the Webflow W if you just focus on you know, the W itself. And so I think that if the goal was to differentiate themselves and look different and more unique and memorable as the actual symbol, I think they did a good job with that and I really, really like it. The other thing that they have updated is the actual UI. They went more kind of like dark mode. And their explanation to this was that they are trying to go more professional. That was their explanation. I'm looking at it. First of all, I like it. It's great. Perhaps, uh, and I've been playing around with this UI because I've been on the beta for like two months already. It's great. It's not more usable or less usable. It's great. My gut feeling is they've made it to look more up to date. They're calling it professional, but I don't know what professional means, right? Because I think like Photoshop is a professional tool, but their UI looks kind of like outdated. Uh, Figma's UI look more updated. Uh, maybe Canva UI looks updated, but they're not professional tools. So I don't know if the word professional is, I think the word professional is actually important because part of the rebrand that they're doing, and I'll get to this at the end of the video when I'm talking about the future, is I think they've tried to make a positioning, new positioning as this is a tool for professional complex websites, right? In the last year, we've had a lot of people starting to talk about Framer. We've been also talking about Framer here in Flux Academy. And they're, they've kind of like, they had to reposition themselves in like, okay, so if Framer is a, also a great tool for building websites, and we have, of course, other tool. Now Wix came out with Wix Studio. Where is Webflow? What's unique about Webflow? And I think that the position that they went for is this professional for really complex and which they call professional websites. And they've tried to make the, the UI look more professional. Again, I think it looks great, whether it's more professional or not. I don't know. All right, that's about the rebrand and what they've called the reskin of looking the, the UI look new. Let's talk about the new features. First of all, and probably most important is the localization, which is the ability to natively create multilingual websites within Webflow. This has been probably in demand for years. It's actually have been announced in Webflow conference last year, but they've never actually delivered it. Now they've delivered it, but also, but only to enterprise clients. And it's coming to the kind of like public audience and, and uh, everyday users, I think in a month or two. I've played around with this. 
and it's actually great. It's super, super easy to do. I know it's going to be very, very useful for so many people. So this is really, really a fantastic addition to the Webflow kind of like core abilities to create again, professional websites, because big websites that have many pages might support many languages have big audience. This is something that is a must. And it's yeah, it's it's really, really cool. The next feature which I think got the whole design community really, really excited is the native SPLine integration. So SPLine is a 3D tool that's basically built for integrating 3D objects on the web. It's been pretty popular and it's been actually pretty easy to embed it, whether you're embedding it in a Webflow uh, website or a framer website or because they just have a very simple embed code and people have been doing it. But the new thing that Webflow did, which is really, really cool, is that right now you not only can embed 3D elements, but you can actually change and manipulate the, th the scene from the Webflow native interactions. So that means that you can make things spin or change, change the lights or change the position of 3D elements when you're scrolling, clicking, hovering, all the thing, all of the native interaction that you can do. And that opens up the ability to create a lot, a lot of crazy, beautiful things. And Vlad did a really cool demo on the stage, which Good job, Vlad. Uh, it's, it's, he's been doing the demos himself in the conference. I was really, really impressed by his ability to show and explain how these things work and show how easy they are. And if you've been living on the internet, you know that over the last two years, 3D websites and adding 3D elements into websites have been so trendy. So now the ability to do that and control it and create advanced kind of like interaction and stuff like that with 3D elements natively within Webflow is a big, big thing. Now I have to say as somebody that has tried to create stuff, stuff with SPLine myself, it's actually not so easy like to work with SPLine. Webflow, the, the Webflow integration is super easy, but SPLine itself, I haven't mastered that yet myself. I did hire an SPLine expert to build models for me that I can embed within Webflow and that has been working really, really well. But probably SPLine tutorials and a course coming up next year because this is huge and so many people will want to work and combine these two tools together. The next thing, which I honestly, I think is the biggest thing with this, all of these new features as is variables. Now what variables is, is basically the ability to globally have parameters that you can change. Now we've had this for years with global colors in Webflow. And now Webflow basically gives us the ability to also create variables for sizes and for uh, texts and fonts and stuff like that. That basically means that I think this is a game changer because it's going to change how people work. Now over the last few years, the all of the kind of like style guides and UI libraries and kits and stuff like that for Webflow has been exploded. People have been creating tons of assets and resources and because people understood that when you have a kind of like a style guide page that allows you to manage all of the styles that goes on on the website makes building much more efficient. Now, and now you you're, you're probably not going to have to do it from a style guide page, maybe you'll have a style guide page, but you'll have native variables to manage everything from there. And it's very, very powerful, you can reference these variables from custom code and from other places and from interactions, which allows you to create very, very powerful things and manage your website much more efficiently. So I think from all of the features that I've mentioned so far, which is kind of like nice, it's great to have them the variables is this thing that's really going to dramatically change how we work, not what only not only what we can do, but actually how we work in Webflow. And this is really, really important. The other thing that I've announced is custom properties, which is basically means that they recognize that you know, their UI doesn't give you access to every CSS property out there. And they know that people have been using custom code to extend Webflow uh, when they need CSS properties that don't are not showing up in the Webflow UI. But now you can basically just add the properties of new CSS properties that Webflow hasn't designed in the UI yet, you can directly add them from the styling panel, which is great, it's going to save up so much writing of custom code that you won't be needing to to write anymore. And it's very, very powerful. And for people like me, who are not let's say code savvy, uh, and have to Google every time I need to add a bunch of custom code, just being able to tap the, you know, custom properties and pick a property and, uh, you know, work with it from Webflow UI is going to make my life 
much, much easier. These are, I think, the, 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 the biggest things. They've also made some announcements about API and dev links and stuff like that in the App Store. I think the App Store is a huge announcement, but it was also announced before the conference. And I think the rest of these things are going to make things uh, easier for people to develop very powerful uh, apps and extensions. And, and I think that is really, really important going forward. So again, to wrap up my thoughts about the future of, of Webflow, I think that we're seeing this year, I think last year and two years ago, there've been a lot of announcements about you know, memberships, e-commerce, uh, Webflow logic, these kinds of things, which Webflow over the last year have kind of like said, wait, 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 that's not the core of what we do. The core of Webflow, the, the really the strengths of Webflow is that it, it's a great tool to build front end, right? To build, to design how things look like and not necessarily manage the logic of the e-commerce and the membership and stuff like that. Uh, even Webflow themselves for the registration for Webflow conference, they've used member stack. They haven't used the, you know, Webflow's native membership. So I think they understood, we're gonna focus on our strengths, which is the builder, the core, the, the, the way that we can allow people to build CSS and HTML and JavaScript without code. We're not going to focus on the, on the logic and membership and that kind of stuff. People can extend and create integrations and do all of these extensions on their own. We're just going to focus on the core. I think this is a fantastic decision. I was actually urging them, you know, to do this for a while because, you know, when they started building Webflow logic, I was like, are you trying to compete with Zapier? I mean, you're never going to be able to compete with Zapier. That's their business, right? And with e-commerce, are you trying to compete with Shopify? It's difficult, right? Shopify is only e-commerce. It's going to be difficult, but nobody so far, I think, can beat Webflow on the core of building, uh, structuring, laying out, interactions, animation, that kind of stuff. So their recognition of where their strengths is and focusing on that, to me, that's very, very, uh, happy news and a, a great promising direction for Webflow and their focus on the pro, the way that they are now saying, yeah, okay, if you're just a freelancer doing a portfolio, maybe you want to go and do that with Frame or we're, we're here when you build something complex, something big, something for clients, something that you're going to charge a lot of money for, something that's going to require you to be a professional. People are hiring Web, Webflow is now something that people hire for companies with, right? It's not just another tool for freelancers, right? Which that's what it started out like. But now you actually have to be a Webflow professional. It's a whole new kind of like discipline. And they've, they've made huge progress by having people recognize that this is a whole thing. This is a profession. And I'm very, very excited about this. I'm very excited to help you learn and master this tool. We're now about to release the fourth iteration of the Webflow Masterclass, including all of these new features and all of these new announcements. And it's going to be incredible. So if you're passionate about Webflow and building your career as a Webflow uh, professional, I'm very excited for, for both of us. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.